I just, I love the way the Lord moved this morning. I, I told someone, if I don't end a message in tears, then you need to ask me what's up. Because it's something ain't right in my spirit. I, it's my goal to end every message I preach in tears. And this morning I had such a burden, had such a desire, had such a longing for a word from God to, to see this church ministered to and to see some of you move out of your season of mourning that was meant to be temporary, but some of you made it permanent. And you were dwelling in just a season of paralysis spiritually that you didn't need to be in any longer. And I... I honestly believe that the word of God this morning, yeah. Wendy, you blessed me when you came. Yeah. I love you, Wendy, so much. And I believe in you so much. And just when Wendy came and responded to the Lord this morning, and, and I know in what she's been through, some of the heartache, pain, and difficulty, and, and knowing that God has chosen to move her into a new season, I... I just love, love the way God began to just bless and pour the Spirit in the wind. Nobody can be what Wendy is to a church. I love her talents. I love her heart. I love her compassion. And as I was laying there, I never thought about this before, but David, when his child died, the Lord brought this scripture to my mind this afternoon, and I'm not going to preach on it. Matter of fact, I never even knew. I never even, it's, it's amazing to me how the Lord would just drop a thought in your heart. And I, it was after that, 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 that he went through one of the most, Grieving times in his life. And the Bible says in 2 Samuel 12. That as David observed his staff. Whispering together. He perceived that the child had died. And the Bible said that he was there. And he was observing everything. And all of the grieving that was going on. And he came over there. And he, and he asked him very simply. Did the child die? They said, indeed, he is dead. It was one of the most paralyzing times of grief in David's life. And immediately after, the Lord showed me this today. The Bible said in verse number 20 of 2 Samuel 12, after they said, he has died. At this, David pushed himself up from the ground. Amen. <laughs> he was laying there in mourning and in ashes and fasting and believing for healing. And, and what amazes me is that immediately his spirit was turned in just a, a moment's time and it went from grieving and believing all of a sudden to where the Bible said he pushed himself up from the dirt. <laughs> and he anointed himself and he changed, the Bible said, and he changed his clothes. Yes. And he went to the Lord's tent yes. to worship. The Bible said he went back to his palace where he requested they served him food and he ate. And his staff asked him, what's all this about, man? Right. Yeah. When your child was alive, you was fasting and you was crying. But now when your child's dead, you got up and you ate. Yeah. They couldn't understand the quick turnaround and the countenance 
of this man of God. There is something that allowed David to move from the most horror, horrific experience of his life and have his spirit change. And for the moment, I believe the power of the Holy Spirit can do that in a way that you can never imagine. And I love how you can sit there grieving. It kind of goes along with what I talked about this morning. You can sit there grieving and talk about what could have been and why wasn't he healed and why wasn't he ripped? Why, why, why wasn't he brought back and why wasn't he made alive? And why don't you hear my prayer? And God, are you alive? Are you up there? What is going on? You can sit there and question and pour your heart out in anger and bitterness and regret. But sometimes you just got to accept the fact that it didn't end the way you thought it would end. But God gives you the power to push yourself out from the dirt and to worship. I don't know how people worship when the children die. I don't know how people worship when the son that they loved goes into eternity. But I want some of you and I want you to push yourself up from the dirt.
trying to figure him out. I'm laying awake at night and wondered and tried to tell him if I was God, how I would do things. And most of the time, they're directly related to my happiness and not his glory. You see, because I want things to be well in my family. I don't want to come home to sickness. I don't want to come home to grieving. I don't want to come home to fractured relationships. I don't want to come home to calamity. I want things to go well according to what I want. But we don't understand at times God's more interested in His glory than your comfort. And somehow, if you lived with a well mate, or if you lived with someone that had it all together, you might not be as deep into Him as you are. You need to understand that. You need to understand that there are some people God chooses worthy to test you and to try you. That you might come forth as gold. You gotta push yourself up from the dirt and say, I'm not gonna breathe. I'm not gonna question. I'm not gonna wonder. Even hey, God, you are God, and I trust you. Yeah. <laughs> 